Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share tips and advice about their industry. And today I have Jeffrey and Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jeff. Glad sure. to be here. Sure. Why don't you explain to everybody uh, what you do and a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been involved in the financial wellness program for some six to seven years. And uh, it has been an exciting venture up to this point. And hoping that uh, with all the tools that I'm able to provide, that I'm able to help people in their financial state and help them just become more comfortable in their financial wellness. Okay. All right. So speaking of financial wellness, um, in today's society, there is a lot of debt out there. So can you explain or can you help somebody or give advice on how someone could get out of debt? Sure. Getting out of debt is, is not an easy thing. But with some of the tools that are available, you can make it less painful. Some of the things that you want to look at, number one, is to curb your spending and be able to track your expenses. A lot of people find that they run out of money before they run out of month. And this is a very common thing. So by tracking your expenses, you're able to find out exactly day to day, week to week, where you stand against somewhat of a budget or where your money is. Have you paid all your bills up to this point? Uh, what monies have you left for contingencies if your car breaks down, if there's a medical emergency? Some people don't look at it that way, but you almost have to do that to be able to make sure that there is, that you don't run into a monthly debt that runs into a quarterly debt that runs into a yearly debt and then repeats itself year after year. Okay, so what do you say to somebody who's living paycheck to paycheck, um, where just say they, they do a budget and there just is no more money available? Well, one of the things- so get, that, a, get a new job? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, Sometimes you have to resort, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. People that are living paycheck to paycheck basically are not managing their money correctly. And that's a very basic thing that we can get down to and talk about later. But if people just become a bit more frugal in what they're doing and what they buy, and what causes that paycheck to paycheck is spontaneous spending. People are out there shopping and they say, I really like that. I've got to have that. Not thinking that I have an electric bill due, I have a gas bill due, I've got a mortgage payment due. They're not really paying attention to that. They're buying on emotion. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I try to help them with is to step out of their comfort zone and to, and to be able to cut back on certain things that allow maybe that 20 to 30, maybe $100 a month left over mm -hmm. that they can carry into the next month. Okay. So with people using credit cards like they do, obviously uh, identity theft is, is an issue. Can you uh, give some tips on how someone could, I guess, protect themselves? Sure. Number one, you talked about credit card. Credit card debt is probably, other than the mortgage debt, is a $1.5 trillion industry. Wow. Okay. The debt alone. Not, you know, there's probably 15, 20 mil, uh, di trillion dollars that people are circulating through credit cards in the United States and in other countries. What happens is the more that you use that credit card, the more that you're putting your information out there for people that are knowledgeable enough to, to steal that information. So what I advocate is that when you're spending money using a credit card, uh, i.e. the unfortunate situation with Target, and they had all those, that breach of, of security, people now are looking at, I should spend more cash, which is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. If you have the cash to spend, spend it. If you don't have it, don't charge it. So with credit card debt, and with ID theft being the number one white collar crime in America, and actually throughout the, uh, it's a global uh, uh, crime, that it takes just a little bit of information to get a whole lot of 
security breach that someone just with your name and your address alone can get a hold of your bank records, can get a hold of your, your payment records on all your utilities. They can do some really severe damage. It takes on the average about, if you're not really prepared for to have your ID stolen, and everybody should, everybody should have a plan. And there's a number of plans out there that, that will protect you. That it takes probably five to 10 years to clear that up and it costs tens of thousands of dollars that a lot of people don't have, which takes you into the breach of bankruptcy. So. Wow, okay. So um, you and I were discussing earlier about how people um, uh, need to become more financial literate. Financial literacy is very important. As a baby boomer myself, and as all the baby boomers out there, Financial literacy is becoming more and more prevalent. What we need to know is how to prepare better for retirement, how to be able to help put our kids through college and through grad school without having to attack our savings. Uh, it takes basically 30 years of saving to live for 30 years. And a lot of people may have five to 10 years to live that 30 years out once they retire. So what I try to get people to do is to understand how important it is to know about how to spend, how to save. For example, one of the main reasons why people spend a lot more in interest rates for buying a car, for getting a loan is because their FICO scores are so low. So one of the things that I advocate is Let's see if we can get that FICO score 100 points higher. And here are the steps in doing this. Now, it doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen over a period of time so that when it does become time for you to borrow larger sums of money to finance another automobile, take out a second mortgage on a home, you're not going to run into the point where you're, um, you're, you don't qualify for that loan. FICO scores right now with banks, lending institutions is a very important aspect, along with your credit history. Mm. Credit history does add to your FICO score or can distract from your FICO score. Believe me, I've, I've seen it from, from one person with this, well, I've, I got a 600 point FICO score. The bank's saying, we need you to be 780, 800 for you to qualify for that amount of money. One of the bad things is, is that baby boomers are putting their kids through college and borrowing enormous amounts of money at very high interest rates because of the low FICO scores. Wow. So it's unfortunate, but it's the leverage that the banks have to say, we'll loan you that money. But if you had a 750, 800 FICO rating, your interest rate would drop five points. Hmm. If not, we're going to have to charge you that five points because of that fact. Wow. That makes a huge difference. Yes, it does. Wow. Yes, it does. All right, Jeffrey. Well, thank you for coming in today. I appreciate your time. Jeff, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yep. And I'm hoping that everyone out there is able to help themselves. And if you can't help yourselves, call me. Okay. I'd be more than glad to help you. Certainly. Great. Well, any of you out there that would like more information about Jeffrey and would like to talk to him, check out the website at the end of this video. And if you would like to continue this conversation online, please feel free to fill out the bo box below this video. That's all we have for this week. Until next time, take care.